In this video, I will be completing a GCSE Maths AQA foundation paper, as you can see behind me, in under 20 minutes. Now, this video will be very fast paced to make sure we can keep it under that 20 minute mark. And because of that, I would highly recommend pausing the video where you want to, taking notes, attempting the questions for yourself first, and then using my answers as a mark scheme. If you want to know anything further, please let me know down below in the comments, but good luck. Question number one, we have a number line. What number is at X? Well, we can see here 25, 30, 35. Here is a different number line. What number is Y at? So zero, we've got three spaces between minus six, so each one must be minus two. Match each expression on the left with the simplified expression on the right. 3a plus 4a is 7a. 3a times 3a is going to be 9a squared. 6 times 3a is going to be 18a. And 12a divided by 4 is 3a. Each shape has an area of 6 square centimetres. Which has the biggest perimeter, a or b? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So A, 14, B, 12. So it's A. Which shape is congruent to shape A? Congruency means exactly the same. We can see if we move them around a bit, you can see that A and D are the same. So it's going to be D in this case. Which two shapes fit together to make a rectangle? Here you can see that if you put C on top of E, then they will fit in together like this, and so it's C and E. On this grid, draw a reflection of shape C. So let's draw a mirror line here, and we want to extend this down by 4, out by 2, and that will look like that. Points P and Q are shown on the grid. Write down the coordinates of P. That will be 4, 3. 4 across, 3 up. Angle PQR is a right angle. Work out possible coordinates for R. Well, PQR is a right angle. So R could be right there. So let's call it minus 2, minus 3. There are going to be other answers for that one. So let me know down below if you can think of any. A shop sells bottles of orange juice. Each bottle costs 75p. Work out the greatest number of bottles that can be bought with £5. So 75p times 2 is £1.50. And if we multiply that by 3, you're going to get £4.50. So times by 2 times by 3 is going to be 6 in total. <laughs> Two shops sell bottles of apple juice. Shop X and Shop Z. 24 bottles we're after. So we can get six packs of four bottles, which is going to be six times £2.50. And six times £2.50 is £15, which is now 10% off. So that's actually going to be £1.50 less than £15, because that is 10%. So that's going to be £13.50 for X. And Shop Z, a pack of 12 bottles is £7, so 24 is going to be 2 times 7 which is £14. So you can see that X is the answer here. Question number six. A game has four cards labelled A, B, C and D, two of the cards at random, six possible pairs. So you could have A and C, A and D, then you could have B and C, B and D, and then C and D. That will be all of them. Complete the boxes using two different even numbers and two different odd numbers. Let's go for 10, and 12, that's going to be 22. And then we just have to make up the remaining 24. So let's go for 19 and 5. Now you've got two different odds and two different evens. A factor of 12 and a factor of 40 that times together to make 30. So that could be 6 and it could be 5. Factors, remember, are numbers that multiply together to make the 12 or the 40 in this case. Complete the boxes using a square and a prime. A square number in this case could be 36, a prime number is 2, so 36 and 2. Again, play around with those, work them out for yourself. I'm sure there are other options. 93 people were asked if they play online games one day. The frequency trees show the answers. So 93 to 48, that means that this one is going to be 45. 
75% of people answered yes played one game. So more than one game played would be 75% of that, which is 36, and the other one would be 12. 75% is just three quarters of 48. That's where I got that from. That's going to be 36. And then 48 minus the 36 is going to be our 12 there. One of the 93 people is chosen at random. The probability that they use social media is more than 0.68. What is the smallest possible number of people who use social media? So because this is a calculated paper, we could first of all just put in 0.68 times 93, and that will work out what the 68% or 0.68 is in this case. That answer gives me 63.24. So the smallest possible number, because it has to be greater than that, would be 64 people. The cost of a TV streaming service is £6 per month for the first four months, £11 per month for the rest of the year. So we've got 6 times 4, which is £24 for, say, January to April. And then for the rest of the year, we have another 8 months. So 8 times 11 is going to be 88. Adding those two together is going to be £112. A TV series has 10 episodes, 9 episodes are 50 minutes long, one episode is 1 hour 42, total length. So 9 times 50 minutes is going to be 450 minutes. One episode is 1 hour and 42. Now if we convert that into minutes, we've got 60 plus 42, which is going to be 102 minutes. Adding those two together, we get 552 minutes. If we do 552 divided by 60, that is going to be 9 hours, because 9 times 60 is going to be 540. And if we compare the difference, that's going to be 9 hours and 12 minutes. There are 1,020 books in a box. Two-fifths of them are blue. So two-fifths of 1020. In your calculator, one-fifth. In your calculator, to work out one-fifth, we can do 1,020 divided by 5. And that is equal to 204. And then we can double that to get 408. That is going to be our answer. Green pens and red pens in a box. What fraction of the pens are green? Now, in total, a lot of people make this mistake, there are seven parts to this ratio. The green ones make up four of those. So it's going to be four out of seven. Only one mark, so no excessive workings needed. There are some calculators in the box. 220 are scientific. 30 are not. What percentage of them are scientific? This is going to be 220 out of the total, 250. So that can be, say, 22 over 25, which is 88%. Again, put that in your calculator, times it by 100, you're going to get 88. Here we have a Venn diagram, 60 people total, gaming headset and smartwatch. We're told 15 of the people own a smartwatch. Now, if seven of them are in the middle, that must mean that 15 minus 7 gives us 8 in here. And then if we add up all of those, so that's 15. 15 add 24 is 39. And then 60 take away 39 leaves us with 21 people on the outside. One of the 60 people is chosen at random. What is the probability that they own both a gaming headset and a smartwatch? Well, we go to our middle section, that's 7. And that's going to be 7 over 60 as our probability. Here we have someone that's going to buy a gaming headset that costs £35. He already has 19 Plans to save the rest in two equal amounts over the next two weeks. With these questions that involve finding what's wrong with a method, I recommend just doing it yourself. Now, with this one, if you put it in the calculator, it basically comes down to bid mass. Because the calculator works out the division first. So what we would need to say is do 35 minus 19 first, and then divide that by 2. That is what's wrong with this method. Kai says that 3 to 2 is equivalent to 9 to 6. Joe says that 1.5 to 1 is equivalent to 9 to 6. Who is correct? Well, you can see that Joe's, 1.5 to 1, if you multiply both of those by 2, you're going to get 3 to 2 as well. And you can multiply both of those by 3 to get 9 to 6. So in fact, both of them are correct. And here is my workings out. 
28 is increased by 25%. 40 is decreased by 15%. Which one is bigger? Now, this is four marks. With a calculator, this should be the easiest four marks ever. 28, to increase it by 25%, all we do is times by 1.25. And for 40, we multiply because it's decreased by 15%. Your starting point is always one. So if we're taking away 15%, that's going to be the same as taking away 0.15, so that's going to be multiplying by 0.85. Put both of those in your calculator, and you're going to get 35 for the top one, and 34 for the bottom one. So the bigger one is this answer here. Four marks, just like that. Factorise 12a plus 15b. Now, first of all, we can see that 3 can be taken out of both of those. Then we've got 4a plus 5b. Write down all the integers that satisfy. It's including minus 3, so minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, but not 2 because it's strictly less than 2. A linear sequence starts as this. Work out an expression for the nth term of the sequence. Well, we can see straight away we're adding 3 each time, so it's going to be 3n. The way I like to look at this is if you're dealing with the 3 times table, so the first number in that is 3, the difference between the 3 and the first term in this sequence is plus 4. So your answer is 3n plus 4. Jess saves 2p, 5p and 10p coins. She has 45 10ps, 8 times as many 2ps compared to the 10ps, and 17 plus 70 in total. Straight away, 45 10p coins. We're told 8 times as many 2ps compared to those 10ps. So 8 times 45 is going to be 360 2p coins. 45 10p coins is going to be £4.50. 360 2p coins is going to be £7.20. So if we add those two together, we're going to get £11.70. And we're told £17.70 in total. So that means £6 worth of 5p's. So now that we know how much the 5p's are worth, if you actually look at the question, we don't need to work out how many 5p's that is because the total value of the 2p coins, £7.20, and the total value of the 5p coins is 6. Now, to give your answer in its simplest form, technically speaking, we don't want to have decimals in our ratios. So if we multiply both of these things by 10, we're going to get 72 and 60. Then we can divide both of these things by 12, which is going to be 6 to 5. And that is your final answer. Again, a four mark question that just takes a bit of breaking down and then you are done. In a game, an ordinary fair six sided dice is rolled. The fair spinner shown is spun. The score is the dice number substituted into the spinner expression. OK, so what this means is if you get a four on the dice, then here, two times that number, so it's doubled. So we can quickly go ahead and fill in all of these, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. 3x is the same, but just tripled. So you can see here we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. And then finally, x squared is going to be where we want to square the number. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. And I suppose if you want to do any workings, you can down below. A player wins the game if their score is 10 or more. Work out the probability that they win the game. Now, if we go back to here, effectively we want to count how many are 10 or more. So you can see that is literally just this section over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that is out of a total of 18. So it's going to be 8 over 18. And if we want to simplify that just for good practice, 4 over 9. The game is played 711 times. Estimate the number of games that are won. So if you play 711 times, effectively what we want to do, 4 over 9, we want to compare that to if you play 711 times. Just to put into context what this means, for every 9 games you play, 4 of them will be won. So if we do 711 divided by 9, it's going to tell us what we need to multiply the 4 by to match the same thing, because whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. That number is 79. So if we multiply that by 4, our top number is going to be 316 times.
Part of a regular polygon is shown. Assume that the polygon is an octagon. Work out the size of angle X. Okay, straight away, a simple fact to remember. All the external angles, so for example this X is an external angle, add up to 360 in any shape. So 360 divided by 8 will tell us each one of these X's straight away. That is going to be 45, and that is our final answer for this one. That is why it's only two marks. There is another method using the internal angles and then subtracting by 180. Let me know your method in the comments if you do know that way. In fact, the polygon has more sides than an octagon. What does this mean about the size of the angle? If it's got more sides than the octagon, that means this number up here is going to be bigger than 8, which means the overall number here is going to be smaller. So x is going to be smaller. So it's going to be less than. Write down the translation vector to get from A to B. Translation vector, how many do we go to the side and how many do we go up or down? So we start, pick this corner here, and we want to work out how many it is to get to this corner here. One, two, three, four across, one, two, three down. So that's going to be four to the right, so positive four on the top, three down, so negative three on the bottom. Volume of a sphere, we're given the equation, which is nice. Bowl is a hemisphere, so half a sphere, with a radius of 12. Now, before I even read the rest of the question, if they've given you the formula for the volume of a sphere and you know the radius, you're probably going to have to use the volume. So I'm just going to do that quickly before, and all I'm putting into my calculator is this. And putting that in my calculator it gives me 7238.23. But obviously, because this is a half sphere, we have to divide that by 2. And that is now going to be 3619.12. So the rest of it. Water is poured into the bowl at this much per second for 8 seconds. So we want to know how much water that is. 325 times 8. That is going to be 2600 centimetres cubed. And is that more than 70% of the bowl? Well, let's work out what 70% of the bowl's capacity is. And the way we do that is 0 0.7 or 0 0.7t times 3619.12 and that is 2533.38 as you can see this is more than this so this might be something like 73 percent of the bowl that is just an estimate it might not be exactly that but the short answer is yes it does fill more than 70 percent of the bowl show that these two rectangles are similar the way we do that is we look for scale factors. Whenever you see similar shapes, scale factors. The way to test for similarity is to make sure these dimensions are in the same proportion to each other. So the height on both of them is the same proportion as the width increase. Now the way we can do that is work out what number do you need to times 5 by to get to 8, and that is 1.6. And again, you can do that by doing 8 divided by 5 if you want to. And we can just double check that by doing 12 times 1.6. And that is in fact 19.2. So these two shapes are similar. A factory packs X boxes of tea bags per hour. Each box contains 80 tea bags. Show that the factory packs 4X over 3 tea bags per minute. So X boxes of tea bags per hour. And there are 80 tea bags in each. So tea bags per hour is going to be 80x. For example, if you had two boxes of tea bags, that's going to be 160 because you multiply it by 80 there. And then to get that in per minute, we just want to divide it by 60. So 80x divided by 60. And if we simplify that down, we can take off the zero from each. So 8 over 6x. And then obviously divide that by 2 and you're going to get 4 over 3x. And there is your two marks. And that sums up the end of this paper. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this helped. Let me know down below if you have any questions or if you want me to explain anything better in the comments. Good luck in your exams. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful.